Okay, I think we're live. So hi everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to this live Course Report Q&A. My name is Liz Eggleston, I work on Course Report, which is a resource for finding the coding boot camp that's right for you. So like I say at all of our webinars, if you haven't looked at Course Report yet, use our directory to find schools that fit your needs, check out our blog, we've got a lot of interviews with students, instructors, founders, um, thousands of reviews, which I know all of these lovely Win coders here have left reviews on Course Report as well. Um, application tips, tons of other resources, so check out Course Report when you're done watching this live Q&A. So our Q&A today is going to be a little bit different, but I'm really excited. So I usually interview like boot camp students or instructors, sometimes even hiring partners, but today we're actually joined by um, Three boot, three boot campers who went to WinCode in Miami and their hiring manager at their new company, Watsco. So my goal is to hear all about what, um, so we've got uh, from left to right here, um, we've got Carmen, Fermin, and Spencer, right? Yeah. And um, so we're going to hear what they were doing before they went to WinCode. We're going to ask a couple of questions about their experience at WinCode. And then we're really going to focus on learning about their job search. And at the same time, we're going to hear from Watsco, from Ivan at Watsco, about what they do, um, why they chose to hire from WinCode and hire from the boot camp. And we're going to hear from everyone <laughs> about what it's been like to work as a developer after a boot camp and with developers from boot camps. So, we're going to try to cover all of that in the next like 30 to 40 minutes, so we should definitely dive in because it's a lot. <laughs> um, so first, yeah, if everyone can just like give us a quick intro to yourself, tell us your name um, and and what you do at your new company and and at Watsco. Hi, uh, my name is Carmen. I do um, product marketing. I mean, <laughs> product management. And uh, Scrum, I'm also a Scrum Master. Um, I used to be in marketing and um, went to WinCode to learn uh, Ruby and HTML and, and all that good stuff. Cool. So, okay, Scrum Master, we're going to learn what that means and what it means at Watsco um, in a little bit. <laughs> okay, so for me, what, what, uh, tell us about yourself. Okay, uh, yeah, I worked in finance before WinCode and now I'm a developer here at Watsco. Cool. I'm Spencer. I was sort of fresh out of college uh, with a brain cognitive science degree. I did a little bit of YouTube music stuff, and then I ended up going to WinCode just to get back into programming. That's how I ended up here as a web developer. So it was for me. Wait, Spencer, did you say you had a computer science degree in your undergrad? No, I had a brain and cognitive science degree. Interesting. I okay. Cool. Well, I love this like variety of backgrounds because like obviously it just shows that um, you know th there isn't a very like clear cut background that you need to go to a boot camp or to be a developer or to be a product manager. So this will be really interesting. And then Ivan, tell us your job at went at Watsco. And while you're at it, I was gonna ask this later, but what does Watsco do? Tell us about the company. Yeah, so my name is Ivan Rapan Smith. I run Wasco Ventures. So Wasco Ventures is the, the startup incubator and corporate venture capital fund of Wasco. Uh, Wasco is a, a, a public company based in Miami. Uh, mm -hmm. We are the biggest distributor of uh, air conditioning products. Um, uh, quoted on the New York Stock Exchange, currently does $4 billion in revenue. And uh, so again, so our group, Wasco Ventures, looks at how we can innovate in our space, either by building our own in-house startups, that's what you know, our guys here at Winco do, or by investing in startups that have a strategic uh, value to us. Amazing. Okay, so we're going to learn a ton more about all of those things. But for the students here, wh um, wh what was your goal in doing a boot camp? Did everybody go to WinCode with the goal of like graduating and getting a job as a junior developer, or did you have different goals or n not have a specific goal going into it? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I definitely had the goal to to go learn and then get a job out of it, um, and and it worked really great. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Yeah, in my case, I started learning programming on my own because I wanted mm -hmm. to apply to finance, and then really liked it. I wanted to accelerate the process of, of learning how to code, so that's why I decided to join uh, WinCode and then get a job. Yeah, mine's a bit similar. I yeah. ended was at like a dead end and ended up back in Miami. 
with not really sure what to do next. Mm -hmm. um, so I had done a bit of programming in college, and I wanted to get back into it and maybe pursue that. And hopefully that would have taken me to a job. And it did. Cool. So I usually have a million questions about the boot camp itself, like your experience there, but I really want to focus mainly on the job search process. So y'all learned Ruby on Rails at WinCode, right? Um, did you only look for Rails jobs once you were in the job search process, or were you looking at tons of different types of jobs? Tell us about that. Uh, so our situation was a little bit unique in that we were kind of offered jobs before the boot camp was done. Oh, interesting. We got offers in the last week. Um, so, uh, had we done more extensive searching, at least in my case, but I had planned on looking on uh, the language really wouldn't have mattered too much, especially as a junior dev. It's really just your ability to learn and pick up stuff. I do have to say, though, one, one of the great things about WinCode is that they, um, they put us in front of all these hiring partners, and that's what gave us really the opportunity to, to meet um, employers. Um, so that's, that's kind of how we really started. Um, but once you once you learn one language, it's, it's easier to adopt any, from what I've heard, and because I only know Ruby. Um, but these guys did really well with other different languages here at Watts Go Venture. So and cool. Like we we work with PHP. So last time I did it, Ruby was fucking WinCode. <laughs> when did you all graduate from WinCode? Just so we have a good timeline. March. 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 Mid March. Mid March. Okay. And, and Carmen, you mentioned being put in front of a lot of hiring partners throughout the class. Was that um, like every Friday you would have a, an employer come in and talk, or did you do like a hiring day, or like tell us tell us about how you got sort of like exposure to um, employers? Um, I want to say it was every week after a certain amount of time that we were at the boot camp um, had a, a weekly. With what they call wind um, okay. which is which is just the hiring partners come in and meet everybody, and, and then they already know who who they would be interested in. So that's that's extremely valuable from a boot camp. I, I know a lot of boot camps don't offer that, um, but for me that was that was great to have. So, Ivan, how did you get connected with WinCode to begin with? Yeah, so I met. Yuha and Joe before I was at Wasco, so um, I was running an accelerator here in, in Miami called the Venture Hive. So I, 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 I knew of them. Actually, I had helped a company I was I was advising called Kipu. Um, you know, I introduced Kipu to WinCode as well, and then they hired their first WinCode there. So and, and I had a good experience with, with how that went. Mm -hmm. And then when I joined Wasco Ventures, and we were you know one of one of my missions was to you know hire you know build a team of of, of developers for Wasco Ventures. It kind of was a natural kind of um, uh, source for me to go and talk to, to Joe and Yuha and say, hey, hey, that we would like to find some student developers. And uh, you know, Yuha invited us to the, the interviews. Uh, so we did, a, we did a talk about, about Wasco first because, you know, A, nobody knows Wasco here in Miami. <laughs> and we were excited about what Wasco, Wasco Ventures was because you know, Wasco Ventures was like four months old when we went through the interviews. And uh, so we tried to create some excitement about, about what we were doing. And, uh, and uh, we saw, we met. Like 18, 18 win coders, and, um, um, and we went for culture fit. I mean, we kind of assume. I mean, we know that the way a nine-week boot camp, you can't expect you know um, rock stars, student developers. So, and, and we know the quality of the program. So, we knew anybody who would graduate from WinCode would have enough technical skills to get started with us. Uh, but we were looking for people who we, we felt good about, who we knew would, would fit well from a cultural point of view. And uh, that's what we did, you know. So we we uh, we went to the interviews. We made yeah. five job offers, uh, four accepted. Uh, one of them didn't accept only because she was accepted at an MIT program she wanted to go to. And uh, oh, yeah. so we we onboarded all all four of them, and it's been uh, it's been awesome. It's been great. How do you usually like? I love that you. It's very forward thinking to consider a boot camp as like a, a source for talent. I think it's awesome. Um, how do you? How else do you hire developers? Like, do you use recruiters? Do you use? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. So, 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 uh, so, what's going here? Yeah. So the, the traditional way of hiring is, uh, you know, recruiters. Um, um, I, I do a lot of networking. I like to yeah. go to events. Just. Keep a finger on the pulse of you know who's doing what, you know who's who's new in town, who's moving or thinking of moving. 
Um, um, but I love, I love, I love the, the boot camps because it's, I mean, it's a, it's a new source. It's different, right? Because you know, you have to, you have to have, like in my case, you don't go through HR because if it's HR, they look at, oh, it's not a computer science grad. Okay, you know, you don't ever really consider. You know, we don't want to think like that. You know, we know, we know, and I haven't seen that happen. Keep that. That's that's the, that's not a good indicator for a good candidate. So we, we like to. It's more about attitude and, and desire for learning and, and wanting to get into the trade, right? So right. if somebody has a hunger and a passion, like like said, I mean, to to self you know, self learn and then go through a boot camp, I mean, that's like wow, I want to have ten of them than five lazy, uninspired computer science <laughs> grads, you know? So um. yeah, well, no, I like you mentioned that you're really hiring for like a culture fit, um, but I like that you sort of went deeper into that. You're looking for people that like. Have a passion for learning and like can actually self learn also. Cool, yeah. awesome. So okay, so you started with the winter views. Um, so did you meet these uh, the five people that you extended um, uh, offers to at that at like a hiring day, like at the winter views? Yeah, so the winter views are interesting, right? So we we came to, we, we went we went to WinCode. Uh, mm -hmm. I organized. It was a, a cool a cool format actually. So we we. We got to we got to uh, to win code. We first did a, like a half an hour little pitch about Wasco Ventures. Mm -hmm. um, we saw smiling faces, uh, <laughs> and then we had 15 minutes conversations with batches of three, right? So it mm -hmm. was uh, so we could ask questions and, and get an initial feel, um, and and uh, it was good because you know we get to see a lot of people in a short period of time. Uh, after those interviews, um, we went to talk to the TAs as well to kind of because we had. And to be honest, you know, after interviews, we already had our short list. We like, okay, there yeah. were six, seven people we liked, so we went to talk to Yuha and, and, and Joe, but also the TAs, and asked them about mm. the, the people, just a bit more about how they thought about them technically and that kind of thing. And uh, and uh, so yeah, one 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 afternoon was enough for us to uh, to say like, hey, there's five people here. We'd love to have work with us. So uh, yeah. it was because it was well organized. They had like the sheets and had the mug shots. And mm -hmm. a description, so, uh, so it was it was it was very uh, it was well organized and uh, it was uh, yeah I, I like the process it was uh, it was very effective. Yeah. Okay. So Spencer and Fermin, from your point of view, going through those um, those winter views, were they like pretty technical? Did you do like technical tests, coding challenges, things like that? And how did you feel from your end, sort of you know interviewing for that developer position? Um, no, like Kevin said, really, that was uh, an interview to get to know people, and mm -hmm. I, they gave us a chance to ask them questions. As Ivan said, I, I had no idea what Wasco did or if that even existed. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it was very good to see, okay, what are you expecting from us? Um, you know, what are we going to be doing on the job? And then they wanted to know our background, and, and you know, that's, that's good when they're you know, they're not just going, okay, do you have a CS degree checklist, you know, kind of thing. So that was, that sure. was very good. Did you walk through your, like, final projects or things to sort of show your technical abilities? Uh, we were starting our final projects, so okay. we only talked about what we were going to do and how we were going to approach it, but not really, we didn't really have anything to do. Yeah, well, we did go to demo day, of course, so we, we did see all the okay. people present, present their projects. I think we even... Did you judge that time? No, that's all. Yeah. 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 Cool. It's well, it's cool to hear that there's like such a sort of long um, relationship. You know, you meet the students, you get to like present what your uh, what your company does. You see like demo day. It's not like you're just seeing them one time at the end of the program. Yeah, yeah. So and we actually cool. also invited them to to Wasco and Wasco. Cool. They could also see. We wanted them to feel what they were getting themselves into, because instead of not, not just like a nice talk and blah blah blah, look how wonderful we are. We wanted to have them to come over and meet the rest of the team and see where their workspace would be, so they knew exactly, you know, what what exactly. As much as you know, let, uh, get a bit more feel about what you know what Wasco was and where we were and what we were doing. So yeah, I think that helped the process, right? And that's where we got our, our technical um, exercises <laughs> as well. You did more of like a technical interview then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, Carmen, did you go into it wanting to do, uh, to take a product management role, a scrum master role? Um, is that what you were like talking about in your winter views and, and when you were interviewing later? 
Yes. Well, I was. I, I. I think we spoke from the very beginning. I was open to anything. Mm -hmm. um, I. I love programming. I still do it on the weekends for mm -hmm. special projects. Um, but but I also love the the management aspect of it. And I think having uh, WinCode and this programming bootcamp as a background to product management and Scrum Master really helps. Um, so so yeah, it was it was kind of. From from the beginning, you know, being open to, to doing other things. Yeah, it's funny because when we went into interviews, we weren't necessarily looking for a scrum master. But we just interviewed Carmen. It was like, okay, she's like she would be an amazing scrum master. And so we just we then we hired her and and we and we said straight away like this is the role we'd like to have for you and we'd like to do extra training because she has the maturity, the leadership skills, and and, and it kind of felt like you know, a natural fit for us. So. Cool. Okay, tell us what a Scrum Master is. Yeah. <laughs> well, in Agile, um, so they, they taught us about Agile at WinCode, and uh, What's Code Ventures is very much Agile. Um, so in, in Agile, they use a, this, this form called Scrum, and under Scrum, there's a, a Scrum Master that is kind of like the liaison between the business side of things and the developer side of things. So it's, it's working with business to get all the requirements ready for the developers to know exactly what to do. So in, in, in summary, that's what it is. Cool. Um, and you learned Agile methodology at WinCode, but then sort of scaled up even more when you started as, a, as an actual Scrum Master afterwards. Cool. So I, it can be a huge deal. Um, for boot camp grads, I know, to know that they'll have like a team of a strong team, like mentorship, um, and and the ability to sort of like ramp up at their first company after a after a boot camp. Can you tell us what like what was your first month like? How how did you adjust to your new roles like in the tech world? Okay. Yeah. Uh, no problem. <laughs> okay, so the night before I started working, I was freaking out. I started thinking, uh -huh. oh, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I don't know anything. No, nine weeks is not enough. I'm going to really fail. You know, the imposter syndrome. So, but then I got here that Monday, and actually I started a Tuesday. So that Tuesday, and, you know, I started seeing, seeing some stuff, and I'm like, yeah, actually, I've seen this before. I know how to do it. And as the week went along, you know, I, I started feeling like, okay, I know how to do this, or at least some of it. So I didn't feel useless, you know, I'm just wasting time trying to learn here. And then, of course, there's, you know, it was a new language and everything, so it takes some, some getting used to, but after a while, it, uh, it went really well. And also, the environment here is really good, you know, very supportive and, and a lot of collaboration, so that I'm um, really thankful for that. Do you have more senior developers on the team also that you're able to learn with? Yeah, of course, and, and they are amazing <laughs> as coders and also as people. They're actually really, really helpful and cheerful and fun. So, yeah, it's not like, oh, God, I have to go ask a question. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, let's, let's work together and, you know, let's solve this. So it's, it's very right. And, okay, so you mentioned, I think this is actually a huge thing. So you mentioned you're working in PHP now. Yeah. Both of you, right? So what has that transition been like? You learned a completely different language. Like, did you have to learn, how did you learn a new one? It was just, you know, come here and, and, and learn it <laughs> on the go. So, but uh, once you understand the concepts, I guess, you know, just moving to different languages, it's not that hard. You just had to learn a couple things here and there, but it wasn't too difficult. Cool. Don't right. apply to other jobs if you're a student yeah. right now, and, and you know, there's another language apply anyway. Totally. Okay, so Ivan, I think you uh, sort of. Oh, go ahead. I have a tip. It, it, it interviews. When you're doing interviews with a hiring partner, don't criticize any language because who knows? That's the language that they're using. <laughs> now, we had one interview where the guy was like, "Oh, no, what do you like?" And I love like, Ruby because it's like PHP and it's like horrible. I would never do PHP. <laughs> Okay, well, sorry, dude. You know, next. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so true, and yeah, that's so true. And most of the boot camps do teach Ruby on Rails, so but like jobs are out there in every language. So yeah, good advice. So Ivan, I think you sort of touched on this, but <clears throat> do you approach 
like mentoring or that sort of initial training and like ramp up period differently for um, boot campers than you would like for an experienced developer? Like, I think that's actually a huge sort of not burden, but a responsibility that companies kind of have to take on. Like, how do you approach that? Yeah, so that's that's a policy. When we talked with, with, with Steve, you know, Steve, Steve Rupp is our CTO about about hiring wind coders. You know, mm-hmm. we, you know, we we have a policy now or a rule where we will not hire another wind coder unless there's at least one single developer that will that will that will be with them, right? Because, you know, you, on the one hand, you, know, you hire wind coders because you can you have to be fair, right? It's, it's the starting salary is is very competitive, right? Um, the downside is you have to, you know, you want to create a team that's productive. So you know you're going to have to spend time in developing their skill sets, and you know it's going to be a, a slower process. So, so the, the 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 competitive kind of compensation only works if you you're willing to put the time in in actually, you know, in, in, in getting them to a level where they do become senior developers. So, so, so yes, we we, we do think about that, and we we want to make sure that you know as we hire more. Win coders, it has to be linked with hiring more senior developers. Um, and I know, you know, Win code keeps keeps trying to, you know, we're wanting to make us hire more developers. But right now, you know, we, we want to ramp up the senior team. And as we ramp up the senior team, we can bring in more more juniors because I think that's the only way that works. You can't expect a Win coder to come in and and say, okay, here's the requirements, and now you know, go build some code. That just that just does not work, right? So. Um, um, so having having a support system that that's that and that's super important. And I must say one thing we have as well is you know, we have we have a, a product leader called Ben Leaders here, who's an amazing organizer. He's he's kind of like the the the, the chief composer, right? Who's 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 been able to. You know, he's a man who will you know define the products and, and make sure that the seniors and the juniors work together and you know, build product teams, shift them around after a while, and and that's important, right? To have somebody who's been there, done that, has built software, and, and understands team dynamics and, and how to kind of organize stuff. But but you need you need you need you can't just. I mean, I, I don't think you can go in there and just like, hey, let's just see see how it works. You know, you have to have a an approach to it. And I know my colleagues at Keepo are the same, right? So Tobias is another you know, fan of of WinCode. He's hired I think five WinCoders, and you know he thinks long and hard about how how to how to um, um, have a senior developer work with a, a, a win code and, and have a plan on, on how to ramp up their skills. I wouldn't say it's a formal plan, as in, okay, by this time they have to learn these skills, but it's mm-hmm. continuous kind of monitoring of a, you know, eagerness to to want to get somewhere, and b, you know, see how how um, you know how how the code they build, how open they are to feedback, how open they are to getting new challenges, and and amongst each other, you know, just for uniform, you know, we 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 talk. Often you know, with Ben and the other developers, like you know, how is Fermin doing? How Spencer doing? Mm-hmm. Both from an attitude point of view and, and from a from a coding point of view. So, uh, um, so yeah, but but you, you again, you, you have to have a, a, a senior support system to make this work. Otherwise, it, I think it's a waste of everybody's time. Yeah, no, I think that's really a responsible way of approaching it. Like you could hire a whole class of wing coders, but what good is that going to do? Um, the everyone. So yeah, okay. Cool. Yeah. Thing to that though, that this is from the hiring, the hiring partner perspective. But as a student, that's something also that you kind of look for because mm-hmm. you're interested in what type of environment you're getting into. You know that you're coming out of a boot camp. You're not a uh, computer science major, so you want that sort of role model uh, figure there that is going to not hold your hand, but at least teach you the way. And as you grow, as your career advances, you're, you're still going to want that. That person willing to help and, and give you a hand and teach you the ways. So it's important also for, for the student, not just for the company. Very important. Awesome. Do you, well, actually, tell us, can you also tell us about a project that you're working on right now? We know you're working in PHP, we know you're working for Watsco, but like, give us, nerd out and tell us like what you're actually working on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So this, so so Wasco Ventures is pretty, 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 you know, stealth stuff. So I, I'll, I'll, I mean, I'll let you guys answer without giving away the whole kind of business model and stuff. So, but, but yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Let's. <laughs> um. Well, actually, we can talk about the original Encore. You know, we, we can we can talk okay. about that, the Uberizing the consumer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, with the economy moving towards uh, on-demand, you know, economy. We're building a platform to match uh, consumers with 
uh, service providers. So cool. We had a, a core application and then some applications that you know, were tied into that. Cool. Okay, I get it. We're it's a little stealthy. That's totally fine. <laughs> no, I think that's a great explanation. I think it, it's just good to sort of put things in context. Because um, sometimes people will like work on internal applications, and it like is hard to sort of envision that. You know. Okay. Cool. Well, I can say it's cool for us because it's it's, it's one of our Wasco today is a B two B company. This is one of our B two C initiatives. So it's, it's super strategic for us, right? This is building a a consumer facing product, uh, which also has a, a technician facing you know, uh, uh, product to it. So so it has it has a mobile application, it has web application, uh, several web applications. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty complex um, but exciting product for us because again it's it's a, it's a totally new business model with uh, technology built from the ground up from from zero, right? So which is which is which is probably exciting because I know you can also you know you can also as a win coder be hired and, and work on an existing product. Mm -hmm. uh, this case, when when they arrived, there was there was nothing. There was not a line of code, right? So it was it was really start start with the team and just build from scratch, uh, which I think was a fun way to get started as, yeah, as, sure. as a week later, right? Yeah. Cool. Wonderful. Well, um, it, it, Ivan, is there uh, and and all of the wind coders here? What's the feedback loop like with? Win code, like, are you Ivan from your perspective, or are you able to like influence the, like future curriculum changes, things like that? If you notice something that um, that graduates like aren't you know super proficient in, um, and then from the Win coders perspective also, like, were there things about um, were you able to like give feedback when you were done with the program throughout? Uh, tell us sort of about that. Yeah, so ab absolutely. So you have. And the Winco team are, are very. Um, they, they continue to ask feedback. So when we hired, after so after the interviews, you know, it's like a first like questionnaire, and, and then after the demo day, <laughs> after the first hires, and they're pretty adamant about it. You know, I can't ignore their emails. I mean, if I don't answer an email, they text me. And if they don't text me, I'll just stand at my doorstep. You know, like, <laughs> but uh, but they, but they are. And I, I'm saying it jokingly, but they, they really really do do the utmost to try and, um, and provide feedback. And, and yes, you know, we we have provided feedback on on the content. One of one of our things, for example, is you know we thought, with all due respect, that some of the projects the Winkers were working on were were not very interesting. And and <laughs> and and, and um, so one of the feedback we gave was, well, why can't a hiring partner kind of give an idea or project and have the Winkers work on that? And that's now been integrated in, in the curriculum, right? So now there is a process where uh, a hiring partner can come and suggest an idea. Win coders can, if they like the idea, you know, work on that product. So, so that's just one example of, of how the feedback loop is working. Um, and then there's also you know new initiatives like like continuous development, like like programs where after initial nine weeks, um, um, having having you know, short classes on different topics uh, just to keep the learning going. So, so okay. yes, uh, I, I like that about Win Code. It's it's, uh, it's not just like hey let's play some forget. Um, they are very engaged with with us. Um, Formally, but also informally. You know, we, we go to events together and, and we, we talk. And we, I mean, I think I see you all at least once per month now. So, uh, so yeah. And, and they, I like that about them. It's very core to the way they work. Is 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 gathering feedback and and tweaking and modifying um, things that they feel are worth um, improving. So, yeah. Oh, well, I'd like to add that. Uh, well, Spencer and I are teaching assistants at Winco now. On oh, cool. Weekends, yeah. So, yeah. Coming full circle, um, testing is a huge, huge part of software development, and we felt that it wasn't, you know, taught us, you know, they, we didn't really cover it, and that was, uh, I guess, at, at least for me, it was my biggest struggle here <laughs> at the beginning. So, you know, I went back and, and told them that they needed to stress testing, and really, you know, now they do it from the get go, so that's, you know, very well, and I'm sure Spencer has gone back and, and told him yeah. other stuff to add too, so. Well, yeah. That's so cool. I mean, I can't imagine anything more valuable to WinCode and to Joanna and Juha, right? Like students that are now working and able to like give close that feedback loop. Yeah. Um, and the non-technical um, point of this is um, we we also started a, a Women of WinCode group, which cool. was pretty cool because in my class there was we were only four girls, and now I think there's it's a little more. Ten. But yeah, so now there's 10, 10 women, which so it's it's a good sign, especially for Miami and, and the whole you know in general tech 
scene to see more women involved and, and wanting to learn and participate is great. Yeah, Carmen, have you stayed um, involved? I'm, I'm always curious for a woman who transitions into tech and goes through a boot camp because actually boot camps on, on average are like closer to 50-50 than the, you know, traditional like tech world, which is like 10%, ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But like what, what's been your experience transitioning into the world of tech um, as a woman? Have you... Uh, found it to be like a welcoming sector or like have you had to make um, sort of like get involved and like push yourself to get involved in the community or what's your experience been? For me it's been great. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's, it's part of the environment of Moscow though um, mm -hmm. because everybody's great. I, I have no issues with, with any of the guys at all. Um, it's actually a lot of fun. Um, just, I guess, just in general, in the tech world, we hear a lot of, of discrimination and all that stuff. We don't live it here, but um, but it, it it also, you know, you notice like when 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 I was in in WinCode, we were only four. Mm -hmm. uh, but you you also have to think like why why is there so little interest? And so it's it's more of a cultural in general thing. But as far as at the workplace, from the other women that I know. Everybody's, you know, having a blast. No, no one has any issues with anybody. Well, I think that doing things like um, women at WinCode and groups like that, and just being like involved again, doing TAing things like that, are are actually huge. So. Yeah, they That's offered nice. us an opportunity the other night um, to go speak to girls who code. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was a bunch of teenage girls listening to women who had graduated from WinCode. Um, so that was pretty cool because that's what they need to listen to, like not not just see the, the successful men in the area, but, but also the women. So that helps. Yeah, that visibility is huge. Totally yeah. agree. Amazing. Well, okay, so Ivan, will you are there plans to hire from WinCode in the future? This was your first round of of WinCode hires, right? Yeah. I guess you're in front of a bunch of WinCode hires and they kind of outnumber you, so I don't know if you can be talking about it. <laughs> no, for sure. It's been an amazing experience for us. It's been, it's been, it's been great hiring WinCoders and, and uh, right n not, not at this moment, but mm -hmm. as, as we start new products in 2016, um, you know, um, WinCoders are definitely, you know, again, it's been, it's been a great experience and, and, and we would definitely Want to want to hire more? For sure. Have Have you ever worked with other boot camps in the area? Um, I know I know the guys at Iron Hack well, and I, I and I, I like Ariel. Um, uh, but you know, again, because today we're not looking at, at any 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 junior positions, uh, we haven't worked with him yet. But I wouldn't exclude it. I, I like I like what Ariel is doing as well. Um, right. No, we just had. The thing is, you have came here before Ariel and, and he spent a lot of time building a relationship with, with the tech community so it was kind of a natural natural thing. Um, but but as far as you know I like the concept and I know they're also doing some some cool stuff so uh, um, um, I don't have any, any bias towards one or the other. Yeah. No so I'm I'm curious like well I think that any hiring manager um, or you know company founder who's watching this would get actually a lot of really good advice from hearing you talk about your experience. Um, but like for, if you are talking to, and you know, we'll hear a lot of um, some like skepticism from old school developers and from old school hiring managers who like won't hire from boot camps. Like what is your sort of advice to? Yeah, so I think, I think there's, there's there's one thing people should remember is that that there's a difference between a you know, computer science like between an engineer and a a a a a, a developer. You know? and I, I don't like the word to use coder because I just that's but but you know there are two different trades, right? And I think with, with modern frameworks, um, you know, you can you can you can. I mean, for me, is a, is a perfect example, right? So when I mean Spencer too, you know, with no 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 because no computer science background. I mean, you know, you, you learn you learn development. Uh, and you can get started, right? You can get with the right with the right approach. You can, you can, you can. It all comes down to being: are, are you productive? Are you building? Are you building valuable? Are you contributing to building a product that serves, you know, solves a problem? If the answer is yes, 
it doesn't matter what your background was. Now it does become it does become a bit more complex as you go into more architecture type stuff, or you know, you have to you have to start designing for scale, and, and you have to kind of like leverage your experience and, and your background as a computer science you know engineer. Um, but I, but I think I think I think um, for developers, um, I'm excited that it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be like the classical path of I'm going to do I'm going to do math and then CS and I'm going to be a developer. Um, there's hundreds of thousands of people now in you know, self self learning and again the Winco is an example. They are this they are building a product which is being used by consumers and techs like every day. This is not just like some little yeah side projects. This is this is serious stuff. We're spending millions of dollars on this, you know. So and they're they're killing it and they are contributing. So I would say to hiring managers is don't look look beyond the, the resume. You know, is what what do you want? You want people who build great products and win coders, you know, they are the proof can build great products as long as you have a senior support system that kind of makes sure that it's designed properly and, and is it has the you know the the, the, the management's um, experience to kind of uh, make sure that it's clear where where it has to go, right? So um, so and I, I think I think I think it's changing. I think a lot of the yeah. modern I think a lot of the other the people who, who, who build teams see it that way too, right? So um, right. Right, right. Yeah. Well, I think that your confidence in in the whole um, process and in WinCode is a huge testament. Um, and also, I mean, yeah, a ton of like really great advice to future hiring managers. So very cool. And then WinCoders, any advice to boot campers who are about to graduate about how to choose the their first company? I know we heard don't rule out any languages, which I think is huge advice. <laughs> And look for a company with one on like a one to one sort of ratio of senior to junior developers. I think that's amazing advice too. Out of the boot camp, I think it's definitely culture fit. Mm -hmm. like, I've been talking about how they were looking for culture fit. Uh, I think the, the students should be as well. You're expected to be in a state of where you still have a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like you're going into a specialty already and whatever. So. It's more important that you are in an environment where you'll feel comfortable. You can overcome the insecurities of not knowing a whole lot, so that you can then learn a ton of stuff and become an invaluable member to it. So do your best to get a feel for the people. You have an interview at the place. Try and set up meetings with some of the developers. Ask if you can set anything like that up, because all of that is really, really, really important to figuring out if you're going to like it there or not. Amazing. Any other advice before we wrap up? Um, let's see. Uh, I think the culture is really important, and then you don't necessarily need it to be one senior developer to one junior developer. It would, you know, it wasn't exactly one to one here. Mm -hmm. you definitely need seniors. You know, uh, you know <laughs> definitely need it because you're gonna get stuck, and then, you know, eight months later, I still, you know, today I needed. We needed to ask a senior developer, you know, what we're doing makes sense or not, and at, at a high level. So, but you definitely need a, a, to be in a place that, hey, you know, not making a mistake is okay, and, and that mm -hmm. people are willing to collaborate and, and work together. Because even if you have all the seniors, but they're not willing to help you, that's not going to work. So that that's really, you know, it comes back to culture, and that's really important. And my advice is to forget about imposter syndrome. Everybody feels it in every level. Um, but that's a big one that I've heard a lot of people talk about. Because um, you come out of boot camp and you think you're competing against a computer science major or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that person interviewing probably has imposter syndrome or had it when they were starting out. Um, so it's all about learning. You're always going to be learning, uh, whether it's a new language or a new technology. It's always you're always going to feel like you need to know more. So forget about that and just be comfortable with what you know at the moment. Yeah, and I think two more, two more small things. Uh, one is very pedestrian, but if, you, if you're going on an interview, don't ask your employer what the working hours are. Red flag. Because <laughs> that's like, why you want to know? You know, it's like, it's, 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 what does that mean? Because it, for us, I know it's, it's been like, does that mean that they want to do a side project? Are they looking for a nine to five job? It's the worst question ever. Don't ask that question. I asked, but I had a very, very good reason. <laughs> because, because, yeah, because he plays soccer, so explain to us, because he's like a almost professional soccer player, but you know, so. It's just, it just, you have, you have it creates the wrong assumption. The question was fair, but for us, I remember us smiling about it. It's like, what, what, what? like there are no hours, you know, just, just, just 
build products, you know? So mm-hmm. what I said is I don't mind coming super, super, super early. If it's at 3 a.m., I just there's a point that I have to go practice. <laughs> Startup <laughs> life. And the second piece of advice is, and again, for me and Spencer and everybody is here, a good example is, you know, it's, you're choosing a trade and, you know, you all know the 10,000 hours kind of rule. So don't stop at what you do for the product, right? If you have ideas, you know, stuff you want to build, you know, for me, un, you know, without us asking him, had an idea of a little scheduling app he had, you know, who wanted to, he had in, in mind, right? And it wasn't in a roadmap, he wasn't. But if Carmen says it's not in the sprint, it's not in the sprint, so don't touch it, right? But he, you know, he went out you know, in his own time, built it, and presented it. He was like, wow, awesome, right? So, so just, just work on your trade. Don't, don't do other stuff. You know, if you want to dabble with another language, you know, it's, it's put in those, those hours, because you know, that's the only way to get somewhere, it's just by, by you know, honing your trade you know, hour after hour after hour, right? So, uh, and we like that. It also says something about people, right? When you, when you build something in your spare time and weekends, it says something about commitment and, and willingness to learn, you know. So uh, um, I think I think that's something we want to see that we've seen with, with our Winco this year, which which again well, that's why we love them. And find a company that values that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, I think that this is a really great testament to um, a, like how fruitful a relationship between boot campers and um, a very forward thinking company can be. So um, I hope that there are other hiring managers and people who hadn't thought about hiring boot campers before um, who are watching this. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, well, I'm going to let you all get back to your um, to your day. So to everyone that's watching this, thank you so much for joining us for this webinar. Um, Ivan, Carmen, Fermin, Spencer, we cannot thank you enough for being here um, and sharing your experience with WingCode and with Watsco. So um, if you're watching this and you have any additional questions, be sure to leave comments below um, on YouTube. Let us know if you have questions about WingCode, about Watsco, about this um, about the hiring process, things like that. And if you have any questions for Core Support, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm Liz at coresupport.com. So I will see you at the next webinar and have a great day.